from our point of view, absolutely. I mean, we, we obviously regret profoundly having to put prices up at any point, particularly when our customers are struggling to meet their, um, their, their, their manage their difficult um, and, and tight budgets. Um, we made that increase a few weeks ago, and the wholesale part of that was a, a 4% increase, which is obviously somewhat lower than the off-gem um, you know, numbers coming out today. Um, and so we are hopeful that we will manage to that. We luckily, we buy ahead at, on a 24-month curve, the way we buy a wholesale gas, which enables us to, to insulate our customers from those peaks and troughs that we see in the market. So it is regrettable that it increased at all, and of course, none of us want prices to rise, but I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic that my business will, you know, will, will remain within that 4% figure. The government environmental and social schemes, which have um, gone up by 13% and account currently for about 10% of the bill, our concern, as you probably are well aware, is that is going to increase significantly, and we would, we would like to see those costs off customer bills and into general taxation, which we believe to be a far fairer means of recuperating those important investments. Because right now, I'm effectively paying, you know, and my income, the same proportion towards the cost of those schemes as somebody just above the fuel poverty line, which clearly isn't, you know, even morally defensible. So hence, we've been very keen, and we welcome the government's decision to review that. So 45% of the bill for us is wholesale costs, and that's gone up by 3%. 23% is transport costs, network costs, and that's gone up by 10%. And 15% are what we've called policy or policy and regulation costs, and those have gone up by 31%. So in terms of external costs, those are the three main external costs driving our price increase. We don't actually know uh, what our network costs are going to be for next year. We don't know that until February. They, they can then change within year. Indeed, I think in 2011, they change four times within year. So there's an element of estimation here. But clearly, there is an extent to which the increase in network costs is being driven by the connection costs and indeed the use of system costs of the remote uh, north of Britain, for example, um, intermittent generation, renewable generation. Um, in terms of what I've called the policy costs, then the largest driver of that is the costs of the energy company obligation. We're not raising them in anticipation of a price freeze, no. I think the point to make about the energy company obligation, which as I said is the largest driver of those policy costs, is that that is an uncapped cost. It's almost an uncapped fine in the event that one doesn't comply with the obligation. And that obligation runs to March 2015, so the, the window is beginning to close within which we have to comply with that obligation. So I'm delighted to say we don't buy any electricity from Empower, uh, maybe one of the reasons why we're so much cheaper. Um, so very briefly, we buy all of our power and gas in the wholesale market, and the easiest way I can explain to you what's happened in the wholesale market in terms of pricing is that the most expensive price we've paid for wholesale gas in the last four years was in, I think, uh, May 2011, for that following winter, winter 2011, that was 74 pence a therm. And since then, it's been below 72 pence a therm for this winter, last winter, and next winter. Um, we're buying gas for next winter at the current price of 69 pence a therm. So I can't explain any of these price rises other than they are not the prices that we see in the liquid wholesale market. We don't have any self-supply to adulterate that. The other thing that um, I wanted to pick up on, if I may, <coughs> the idea that it's okay to look at forward-looking prices instead of backward-looking prices. The forward-looking prices reflects your anticipation of the risk of prices rising in the future, but I don't think British consumers care very much if you've traded inefficiently. <coughs> and you look back and you see what the actual price in the day was and say, that was the wholesale price for that winter, for that day, that should be the reference price, not what any individual energy company predicts the energy price might get to and reflects that in their, in, in their retail price. And so, like some of the committee members, I've been somewhat confused by uh, looking at the explanations for the price rises in, in the past three or four weeks from some of our competitors because we don't see nearly the same impact, especially on wholesale commodity costs. You see, in, in the example of NPower, um, the, the cheapest price on the market that they have is, uh, so the, the, their standard tariff is 16% more expensive than they're willing to sell on their cheapest tariff basis. So it looks to me like a lot of energy companies, or a significant number of the big six, are charging the maximum price they feel they can get away with 
to the customers that they feel will not switch under any circumstances, and then maintain an illusion of competitive pricing uh, with tariffs targeted towards a very small number of relatively well-engaged customers. So that price differential between the, the price that most people pay and the price that, if you look at a headline rate, what the cheapest deal in the market is, in the case of Empower, which is the worst offender, uh, historically and today, the price differential is 16%, which is about 200 pounds. We buy our electricity and our gas for our retail business from the market via our trading business. We sell, so the, we operate our businesses on a standalone basis, so our retail business on the one hand, our generation business on the other hand, and the generation business sells the generation <coughs> again in the market, at market prices, through the trading business. So there is absolutely no cross-subsidy between the two businesses. We operate them on a standalone, separate basis. In fact, this is one of the things with which we, in which we agree with Ed Miliband, that there should be virtual separation between generation and retail. We already do that, and we believe that, it, that as a requirement for the whole market, we believe that's a, a good proposition to improve the transparency and clarity in the, in the overall marketplace.